on this episode of Mosaic with TJ. I want to digress. I want to talk about the issue of your ex, whether it be male or female, your ex, you know, Mm -hmm. the child's in the middle. The ex has moved on. In my case, my daughter's father and I weren't together when I had you. He moved on. Uh, He had a girlfriend. I will be very honest. And of course, you're too young to remember this because you were baby, 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 baby. I remember early on, I guess maybe your first year or two. Mm -hmm. He had a girlfriend. I don't remember her name. But I had a problem with her. (laughs) Oh, no, ma. I had a problem with her. Oh, no. And... No, not Atlanta. Okay. The backdrop is again the the her ex's um so her ex her child's her baby, father. Her baby daddy's girlfriend. Yeah. And see did I, I, you know, the I, daughter's hair. And, and she, she mad kissed. about it. Yeah. Oh right. And she wanted Atlanta to know. And see, oh. here's the thing, you know how I feel about that phrase, baby daddy. You know, listen. Just saying. So what it, it makes is. my it makes my behind hurt. It just really does. The <laughs> phrase baby mama, baby daddy, that makes my behind hurt. That is so behind. ghetto unfabulous. Well, it I mean, so obviously ratchet. this whole situation is about to be ghetto unfabulous. So that's why I said you know, it like that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> because, you know, we say baby daddy, baby mama. Let's, let's be clear. The child ain't going to be a baby forever. It's a good day. No, no problems there. We're not together. Um, we have a beautiful... My baby daddy Terrell is a good day. No, no problems there. We're not together. Um, we have a beautiful four-year-old little girl together. Um, ooh, I'm taking. You need the what he did is just what you don't do to a uh, baby mama. Period. He came, got our daughter. They were spending time, time together or whatever with each other. He took her around. Actually, his girlfriend. Now he came through and like he came y'all first of all. He let this woman. Do my baby hair. They get better. I can see them in the job. I can pay. The problem is now my daughter talking about she don't want me to do her hair. She don't ask me to do her hair. Oh, 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 all right so you heard what she said she has a four-year-old she's co-parenting obviously she and the child's father they are not together the father has another woman right now she also made it seem like he was a player like his relationships with women, they don't last that long. She said that the daughter was with the father and while she was with them, his new girl, Ashley, decided to do her hair. She did such a great job on the baby's hair. She said that Ashley made her feel like a princess. She was treating the baby really nice and so the baby liked her. Baby mama is upset about that. She said that the baby told her that she didn't want her to do her hair anymore. She wanted Ashley to do her hair. The baby did mention to the mother that Ashley didn't hurt her hair or put it too tight when she was doing it. Did you hear what she said that the baby disrespected her? She felt disrespected because the baby gave a compliment to Ashley. And she was so angry, she said she was about to square off for her four-year-old child. So this baby could stand to get a whooping because of this? And you wonder how so many kids feel stuck in between their parents and they usually feel like they have to take their mother's side, especially if she's the one who has custody of them. If you go against your mom and go with your dad or you're cool with his new woman, some baby mamas are so trifling that they will take it out on their kids. This is why I say young women, avoid men with baby mamas. You don't want to be dealing with crap like this. 
And the truth of the matter, it's not even about the little girl. It's not. It's not. It's her own problem. She's jealous. Honestly, in my opinion, again, this is my observation. Clearly, I was not there. But Mm -hmm. I low-key feel like that girl actually did a better job of doing the girl's hair than the mother ever could. And the mother Mm -hmm. feels some type of way about it. Like Mm -hmm. she's being replaced. And I'm like, that's something you need to work out in therapy. Because last time I checked, you're the only one who birthed that child. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if someone does a better job than you at something, you will always be that mother, that child's mother. Yeah. So it's like, it would be like me if I hired a chef being mad in the shell likes the chef's cooking more than me. They're a chef. <laughs> it's what they do. <laughs> like, <laughs> hello? Like, it don't mean I'm less valuable now. Right, right. <laughs> it's just what they're better at than me. Make a good point. And in addition to that, one of the things that really bothers me or concerns me in this climate of letting letting everything out, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be calling into a radio, radio, a syndicated radio show, whether it be putting it on YouTube, TikTok, you know, whatever. The problem is, particularly as it relates to children, at some point, the child will be able to look up your foolishness. That's what makes it worse. Yeah, for sure. They'll be able to look up your foolishness and, you know, and be able to see, you know, see how ridiculous you were. But before we get into that, before, before, I don't want to digress. I want to talk about the issue of your ex, whether it be male or female, your ex, you know, Mm -hmm. the child's in the middle. The ex has moved on. In my case, my daughter's father and I weren't together when I had you. He moved on. Uh, he had a girlfriend. I will be very honest. And of course, you're too young to remember this because you were baby, 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 baby. I remember early on, I guess maybe your first year or two. Mm-hmm. He had a girlfriend. I don't remember her name. But... I had a problem with her. <laughs> oh no, ma. I had a problem with her. Oh no. And when I think back at it, I'm not sure if I had a problem with her specifically or if it was because your father at the time wouldn't wouldn't allow me to speak to her when she had my kid. Now, Ooh. Did he have to? No. But then he would, you know, we didn't have the cell phones and stuff like that, like, you know, with picture phones and stuff like that at all. Mm-hmm. So when uh, you he would uh, bring you back and I would notice your hair was combed and this, and you had a cute outfit on, I'm like, who did her hair? Who put, you know, and it's not that somebody did it, but he was so mysterious about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we women, if you're going to be mysterious, we want to know more. Mm-hmm. You know, but when it when it when it boils down to, and I'm gonna be completely honest, what it boils down to is what you said. Insecurity. As a new mother, a young, well, I wasn't that young, I was 27, 27, by that time, 28, 29, I was like thinking the same thing. Insecure. Thinking, well, what if my baby likes her more than me? Mm-hmm. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> that is dumb. But I, like, yeah. yeah. And it's harder, too, because like I said, I, I'm someone who I see both sides of it. Like, I see if you're a mother who wasn't planning on being a single mother, I can see the insecurity of like, you know, he was able to move on so fast. What about me? Now it's just me, you know, so my whole life is surrounded by this child where he gets to live this life, not surrounded by her and, you know, find another partner and all of that. So it's like when the last thing you have to hold on to is your child, the threat of that, losing it, whether it's superficial or not, is enough to crumble anyone, you know, it's, it's, and it's, but it's, it's unfortunate because first of all, it shouldn't have been this way because it was never created to be this way. But, you know, a lot of women don't get the counseling help that they should get Mm -hmm. because being a single mother, like, again, I thought I said on this show, 
I am married and you come over and help. And I still don't know how you did it by yourself. Cause I'm ready to, I'm like, nope, mm -mm, this ain't for me. Couldn't do it. <laughs> like I would not make it because it's so much mental, like fatigue dealing with a child. To your point, you make a good point because at this juncture, again, he's moved on. Uh, and, you know, I'm scared, you know, I can look back on it now and think what was happening in my mind. I'm scared. Okay. If they get married, will he, will he sue me and take my child from me? But you know, as I said, my child, it was our child, mm -hmm. but this is what, but that's what the insecurity is because again, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, if he gets married, now it's a, a two parent household. They make more money than me. Yeah. Cause again, cause I was, you know, working two part, two part, two jobs in school, you know, they make more money than me. He can provide a better life for me, for her. You know, will, will he take her from me? Spinning again, mm -hmm. my mind spinning, scared. And it's a lot. Like I, re I remember enough of that foolishness between the two of y'all to know I was like, no, that that's when I knew for sure I took having kids very seriously because being on the side of that being in the middle absolutely it was like nah bro like and and unfortunately adults me included which why I have to pay attention to Michelle we don't understand how much what we do affects them yeah like we like adults really don't they think oh no they don't see that yes they do anything yeah. you think your kids don't see they see they mm -hmm. just can't articulate what they see. Really share if you have friends, family members, you know, that are single mothers, single dads dealing with the other parent. That's a because lot. Here's, man. Because this, I want you to learn from and see, and and I grew, I grew because, you know, and, and it's interesting because I had not at that time, I was not going to counseling or anything. I didn't know I needed it. And probably really needed it because, you know, I'm a new mom, you know, all these kinds of things. I'm trying to juggle this thing. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life, take care of my daughter, all this kind of stuff. And let's see here. And I needed, I needed, needed therapy, but I didn't have time to stop and to figure it out because we, let's be mindful. 20 plus years ago, black folk, we wasn't going to counseling like that. I'm just saying. I mean, really nobody was going to counseling like that. Like... Uh, not, yeah, like not to definitely other not cultures, other, other cultures, yeah, do. other cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I will say even now in my generation, I was a, I think I was at church. We were having like a group meeting or something, and mm -hmm. I said my mom normalized counseling. Thankfully, so yeah. getting counseling wasn't like a, oh no, we don't do that here type thing. It was like, oh, let's just go to counseling. Oh, let's find a therapist. Like it was, it's something you just didn't you always made sure it was available. It wasn't something that was frowned upon. Even when we had our own issues, you were like, okay, let's go to counseling. Was kind of absent by choice, slightly. It was a little bit of my mom's crazy, which kind of kept him <laughs> away a little bit more. Um, but he, his first love was always working. So even though he was a father, he still wasn't around when he had the option to be. So it was kind of just a little different. But if you're someone who's actively in your children's life, then yeah, you're a single father, even if you're not married to the mother, like that's a single father. And so let's fast forward <clears throat> to when we're in San Diego. And I guess, you know, over that time between when you were a toddler and part of, and, and here's the thing, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you, part of my insecurity at the time before I went on active duty, part of my insecurity was we weren't married. Mm -hmm. I had moved to Oklahoma. He's still in California. There was no document that said who had primary custody because we weren't married. Mm. So if I would have flown and I flew you to California to visit your dad, he up and decides not to bring you back to me. Mm. There was nothing I could have done about that. Really? Really. Even because though you're the mother. We, because he's the father and we weren't married. So he 
There was oh, no so you, document. No, there was no legal like there separation was no legal or custody document to say who had uh, custody. And at the time, the laws were wherever the child had at least been six months of their time, that mm. was where they resided. And a lot of the times, your father wouldn't tell me where he lived. Yeah. <laughs> Early on, he wouldn't tell me where where you where he lived. So he would call me when you're there, and if we have an argument or whatever, you know, and I I couldn't get to you. Wow. So so that was part of my. Oh no, yeah, that makes sense. I would be terrified too. I'd be because, like, I don't know where you at. You know, and then, <laughs> you know, so part of it is insecurity, definitely. And I was afraid of you know if he decided that he didn't want to bring you back to me. Because I would, you know, you couldn't fly by yourself as a toddler, so I flew you there. Mm -hmm. But I was afraid that, because here's the thing, I didn't know where he lived. So even when I would go fly back to get you, if he decided he didn't want to bring you to Auntie Marsha's house or whatever, or my or, or Uncle Vaughn's house, I didn't know where to go get you. Mm. So that was unique in and of itself. So we had issues. Early on, oh, well, yeah. we had issues. We had issues. Um, but moving forward, once we got through our issues and, you know, we married and later divorced, here comes the new girlfriend who I loved. Oh, and yeah. Interest an interesting thing about it, early on, I didn't like her either. You did it? No, because... <laughs> Why not? She was great. She you was know, one of the best ones he ever had. But it wasn't her fault, though. Why? That's why, ladies and gentlemen, get to know who's in your child's life. But don't, don't be defer, weird about it. Don't, don't, don't defer to what the ex is saying about them. You say, I would like to meet so-and-so. Because the way your father was presented... Oh, you was a crazy black woman? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see that. So she didn't want to meet me. Because she thought it was going to be nothing but drama and craziness. Because she thought I was a fool. I see. I see. She thought, so she didn't want to meet me. And so he was putting stuff in her head. Just, yeah, like, that's, we went, just like we women put stuff in our, you know. But see, me y'all don't pay attention to it because y'all like, whatever. Yeah, that's the But problem. women... We, 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 you know, we say, we like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, we you know, listen to it. Yeah, especially when we listen we, to it. We dating. Oh, yeah, it's their word over everything. Yeah, yes. they, they can't be wrong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's real bad. You know, because they, I had some crazy, but what, what he didn't tell it was what the part that he did to it. <laughs> the part to add he to can, it. He always conveniently leaves that out. Conveniently. You know, no it's doubt hilarious. I had my crazy moment. You no was. Doubt. You was. Still huh. are. A little bit. Yeah. No doubt, but he would leave that part out of his, you know, contributions. Of course, of course. So finally, when we met, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not all the way wrong, sir. You're not all the way wrong. I ain't gonna lie to you. My mama crazy. She crazy, especially back then. Oh, Terry you Jones. Know. But, but, but she, Danielle said she it. Terry Jones Randolph now, but Terry Jones, you know, mm -mm. <laughs> Terry Jones was about that action. She was, she, she, yeah, she little wasn't wrapped too tight. <laughs> so fast forward to we meet, we'll just call her Miss L. Mm -hmm. That young lady, she loved my baby. She loved you. Oh yeah. I, I loved her. She loved you. And once we got to know each other and she found out I wasn't as crazy as someone had made me out to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I say she took care of my daughter, when I say she loved her, tell her about it. family again. loved me. Tell them about it. Tell them about it. Goodness. I mean, well, she was, you know, it is a cultural difference. She was Latino. So... This is where I grew to love Latin culture was from her mm -hmm. because, man, like she took me to her abuela's house, you know, 
they had, it was just amazing. Like I became a part of the family, like with her, you know, her primas, I met like, like Teals and Tias, like I met everybody, you know? So it was just great. Um, I would go to their like family dinners, you know, it's been holidays, you know, it was, it was great. So like she, I still have a blanket she made me still. I was going to say day. that. Yes. So, you know, even though they're not together, she was one of like the best I ever had for Cause like I said, for me as a child, I ain't gonna lie y'all. I was not the easiest to deal with either because I'm, I've always been territorial of people who I love. So when someone comes in, especially towards my dad, reason why he had money and I could smell a gold digger a mile away, the way, even as a child, I was like, okay, my dad ain't all that attractive. So for y'all to be all over here Why trying to sniff, that? he's not, he's like a five at best. Okay. He's not, he's not all that. He's not, you know, but for these women who were younger trying to, you know, slide in, I was just like, mm, he's not your meal ticket. And so that's why I was always cautious of them, you know, dating my dad, but she was the only one who I could tell genuinely loved him and genuinely loved me. Like, that's why I loved her. Cause it's like, when I can tell you're genuine, oh yeah, it'll be great. But when I can feel that you on that suspicious stuff, I wasn't with it. Yeah. You know, I remember, I don't even know if they were still together at this time, but remember when you got baptized and you was you and our cousin? It was cousin? when I was at private school, right? You were school? had to be because we were still in San Diego because we uh you got um baptized. We do we went up to uh Los Angeles because you got baptized at dad at my dad's church. Was it his church? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And yes. we um and I don't even think your father and her were together. I but, mean, she, she came to Georgia one year for Thanksgiving or something, and they were together. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, hey. <laughs> she, you know, she came to the uh, to the baptism. I think you may have been, you had to, because we had, you had to be about seven, seven or eight, because we hadn't moved to uh, uh, Tennessee yet. And she came, her sister came, I think one mm -hmm. of the, uh, her nieces and nephews came. So again, it got to the point that, even when her father and Miss L weren't together, we, me and her talking, and she wanted to visit with Danielle, wanted Danielle to come visit. Sure, no problem. She, that's what you want, ladies. That's what you want, Jen. You want whoever's in your child's life, if your ex has moved on, I knew that this is one of the, I knew that she loved my daughter is when it was sometimes it was time for the weekend to be over and she would say, can I stay a little longer? Yeah, I loved Miss L boy. He but was see, best friends. The younger <laughs> me would have said, no. <laughs> but by this time, I got a revelation. It's a good thing that this woman loves my child. It's a good thing. Yeah. Like I said, I think a lot of... Um, Again, there's no shade to anyone who their world is their children. Oh, <laughs> oh that's funny. Uh, but I, I told you this yesterday, mom. It's like, you know, as much as I love Michelle and I love, love that girl, I have to remember I can't make her my entire world. She's in the hemisphere. She's, you know, she's in it, you know, but to surround my entire thinking and the way I move to the point of obsession it becomes toxic to the baby. Yeah. And again, I had got a revelation because a lot of times, you know, like Danielle just said, her father worked a lot. And, and so, so some of my frustration was the fact that Miss L was spending more time with you than he was. Mm -hmm. My frustration wasn't at her because I knew my child was in good hands. Oh yeah, we went on shopping sprees to the beach. Wasn't good. And she made sure, and she made sure. I mean, she took care of her, and she didn't even have any kids of her own. No, I was her kid. I mean, <laughs> like... truly. But my frustration was, she wasn't. You weren't her child. You were his. Mm -hmm. But she was more. So it may have sounded like it. Sometimes I was upset because she was. But it wasn't. It was because 
she was spending more time with you than he was. Mm -hmm. And again, the point of it was because she would make the drive from Orange County to San Diego to pick you up without him. Oh, dang. For real? You didn't remember that? No. Yes. Or when we, would meet, half, we would meet halfway, I'm thinking he coming. We she And it's her. I'm like, what? But that's just the way my dad is, man. It's like he... He looks for a woman who can be a household woman, like house stuff, kids taken care of. Like, that's what he looks for. And she was the epitome of that. Like, she was a, like, if she's not married, I feel horrible because she was marriage material. You know, a little crazy because she's Latino. A little crazy. <laughs> I didn't see that. Well, see, and the, again, but, this is not to not to you know bash dad, but again, fathers. When it's time with your kids, it's time with your kids. Now it's great if your significant other is no, not it's absolutely wonderful if your significant other cares and loves your children. But when they are with you, they are with you. Well, I, that's true. And I again going back to Miss L and going back to this concept that. You want to have a relationship with whoever's going to be around your children. And this woman who was a raving banshee on a syndicated radio show over something as minuscule as that, over a four-year-old looking like a princess, I'm embarrassed for her. I am because she I'm made her, for her. She if she better hope her profile picture wasn't nowhere on that radio show. Because if it was, you basically just exiled yourself to never find a man. Like, because no man is going to want to deal with that. And and, and here, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. You see how calm, cool, and collected the father was versus her raving crazy antics. <laughs> you, you see the difference in that? Oh, it was drastic. And I'm like, I can only imagine. How did you deal with this young man? How did you deal with this? That's why he didn't. <laughs> it's apparent that's why he didn't. Okay. That's what. And so, fast forward again. You want to, you know, first and foremost, you would hope that you're married when you have children. Or, or, and if you're married, you stay together when you have children. But you want to make sure that when you are upset, that you examine the reasons why you are. You know, yeah. I have to admit, you know, I can admit now, but didn't see it then. You know, part of me still wanted to be with your dad early on. Um, and part of me was scared that he would take, you know, because we weren't together, he would take you. 